Hey everyone, today in this part of the series, we're going to talk about the implementation of BERT and then finish the competition nice and clean. Well, till now, what we did was that we analyzed the data and then deleted the two location and uh, keywords columns because they were redundant and didn't give us anything specific. And then we said that the most important column is the text column that contains the actual text of every and each tweet. So after that, we explored the data and saw that the text column was a little bit uh, sloppy and dirty. So we designed a uh, function in order to clean the text and get the most important parts of it out. So our model can more easily distinguish between different um, texts and also label them as disastrous or non-disastrous. Uh, now, because we cleaned the concatenated data set, we have to separate the cleaned training and testing data based on the shapes of the data sets. And right now, we can take a look at our training set, for example, and see how it's cleaned. Well, as we can see, the text is now cleaned and free from, for example, stop words, punctuations, and probably URLs. And overall, this uh, clean text column is the one that we're going to give to our model. Okay, moving on, we have to import some packages and libraries in order to use BERT. First of all, we're going to import the BERT tokenizer in order to tokenize the text. And second, we have to import the BERT model that has all the layers and parameters. Well, this is the URL we're going to use in order to get the BERT tokenizer and then import it and define the full tokenizer in order to use it later. Uh, so go ahead and run this and then we have to choose which BERT we want to use based on how much time you can spend on training or accuracy you want to get. You can choose one of the basic large cased or uncased models. Um, Cased here actually means whether or not you want to differentiate between lower cased and upper cased words and letters. Well, here because we want to make a basic BERT model and we don't want to use a model with too many layers, we go with the first option that has 12 layers and doesn't have any upper cased word in its vocabulary. Then we define the BERT layer that we're going to use and say that we want its parameters and weights to be trainable and we want to train it on our own data set. So we define trainable as true. And then here the BERT's vocabulary file is defined and it is based on this vocabulary that we tokenize uh, the text. So if we chose, for example, uncased BERT as our model, we're telling the tokenizer to lower every word and token because we don't care whether or not we have any capital letters inside our text. So when you run this cell, it will ask you which BERT you want to use. And here we'll say A, the first option that is a base uncased uh, BERT. And it might take a little while in order to just import everything and get the BERT model and also the vocabulary file. So after we imported the tokenizer, we can just go on and put our own words and sentences here and see what it'll give us. Uh, well, this is one um, sentence that I put here. For example, terrorists will crash the tower. We can see after running this cell, we have um, all the words in lowercase and also uh, they're all separated in different tokens. Uh, you can go on and put your own words in it like you can even uh, give it different words like for example open-minded. And here the interesting thing is that when you run this you can see that open is divided from mind and ed. And it is actually understanding that this word is a compound word and it is made out of different tokens. Um, also, it has some kind of hashtags before mind and ed because it's understanding that this is part of a, another word, like it wasn't a token or a word for itself. Well, here, because I wanted you to see how the process of encoding our text uh, is defined, I 
uh, wrote one little function in order to show you how we tokenize and actually BERT tokenizes the text. So in here, we first of all tokenize the text by tokenizer.tokenize and then add two more tokens as we said in the previous video uh, called CLS and SCP. And then we convert all these tokens to digits and we specify one digit to every and each word. So after running this uh, cell, we can see that the text is now tokenized and also digitized, but still there's one problem. Well, as we saw on the previous video, we can say that because we want to give all these vectors to a neural network, we have to change these vectors so they all have the same dimension and shape and also uh, length. So what we do is that we search for the maximum length of all the vectors and then pad the other ones that are shorter than that specific length. So after running this code, we can see that the maximum length is 53 and in the padded tweets uh, column, we can see that all the tweets are padded in order to have that length of 53. So now here in the BERT model section, we want to construct the BERT model all in one class, and then we call it tweet classifier. Well, you can call it whatever you like and then define the parameters that we'll need for training and building the model. Like how many epochs, what loss or batch size or learning rate we want, and then define a function called encode in this class, uh, which does pretty much all the tokenization, padding, and in general processing of the text. So in the encode function, what we do is that we take every and each tweet or text as you see here. And just like what we saw earlier, we tokenize the text and then add two more tokens at the end and the beginning and convert all of them to digits. And then define the length of the padding based on the maximum length that we give the model. And then besides from the uh, padded vectors that we created, BERT actually wants two more things from us as the input and they're called mask and segment uh, mask is just a like mask that shows which parts of the text are words and not zeros or paddings and segments are only zeros with the length of the max len that we defined earlier and then at the end we append all of these three uh i mean padded mask and segment two three lists that we defined here called all tokens, masks, and segments, and we return them as the output of our function. So here in this make model function, what we do is that we define the inputs and outputs and also the whole architecture of our model. So here, when we want to define the inputs, if you're familiar with Keras layers, you know that we can define a shape data type and also name for each input. And then we give all these inputs as a list to the BERT layer that we defined earlier. Uh, what BERT gives us as the output is one sequence output and one pulled output. And you don't have to worry about the pulled output because what we want here is the sequence output, which gives us all the embeddings of all the words in every sentence. And after that, we take out the first token or uh, embedding of each sentence. And as we said in the previous video, we only have to use one dense layer with a sigmoid activation function in order to classify our text. Then at the end, we define a Keras model that uh, takes actually all the inputs that we defined and then outputs the out that we defined here. Then we define one optimizer and then compile the model with a last like binary cross entropy that is used for binary classification and also define a metric like for example accuracy for the assessment of our model. 
So now that we have our model ready, we have to define the train function, which will help us uh, separate the data set into training and validation set, and then train it on the training set and uh, actually validate it on the validation set. But first, you can see that I've used a checkpoint here. And checkpoint is actually a callback that you can call in the uh, process of fitting the model. And it's one of the options that Keras uh, offers you when you want to uh, save the best model that you have. For example, what it does is that, that it offers you a variety of tools in order to, for example, choose the best model that you've trained or uh, stop the training process when, for example, the um, validation loss is increasing. There are actually a ton of options uh, on the TensorFlow uh, website that you can check out and use as your model callbacks. But here, uh, we just want to use model checkpoint to only uh, save the model with the best validation loss, or you can say the least validation loss. Uh, so moving on here, we define how we want to train our model. For example, I use the validation split of 0.2. You can choose whatever you like, but just don't forget to encode your X before fitting the model. And then after fitting is done, the function will print model is fit. And yeah, that's it for the fitting part. And then we move on to the predict function. Uh, this is kind of really simple because all we have to do is just load the best model that we trained and then use it in order to predict the test set labels. And at the end, we define the model uh, based on tweet classifier class and uh, give it the options that we want and then train it on the cleaned train uh, data set. You can go ahead and change all these options, but I chose three epochs and also batch sizes of 32. And after training the model, um, I got the validation accuracy of 82% and also the training accuracy of 88%. So yeah, that's it. Go ahead and change all these things and see what you get. And if you got anything better than 82% validation accuracy, uh, tell me in the comments down below and if you have any questions, you can ask here or in the Kaggle kernel. Also like and subscribe if this video was useful for you. And yeah, that's it. I hope you all have a great day. See you next time.